Oh my God, you guys are awesome, I love this. Up until that point, I was getting a lot of crying mom roles. And <laughs> this was such a breath of fresh air for me. <laughs> I've just been really fortunate in all the roles I've, I've got. Every time you audition, you're planting a seed. Oh Love. no, you watch Mean Girls before no. every audition. <laughs> no, no. How many times have you seen it? <laughs> Too many times to count. Yeah, that's a guilty yeah. that's If a guilty I was pleasure. a rich man, yeah, yeah. Da, 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 da. Welcome to Amigos PC. If you were looking for a podcast with high standards and an appreciation for the finer things in life, like water polo, ballet, equestrian riding, cricket, and trips to the countryside, uh, you're in the wrong place. If you're looking for a podcast that celebrates drinking, random thoughts, wacky conspiracies, memes, crypto, cinema, and a lot of other things that don't really make any sense, then you're in the right place. This is Amigos PC, and here are your hosts, Scott and Mark. Hey, you. Yeah, you. You're hearing this for a reason. You haven't subscribed to the Amigos membership on Supercash yet. Uh, for as little as $5, you can get access to our feed with no ads and exclusive membership discounts and merch. Jump up to our $30 tier and get everything plus direct access to us via our Discord channel, Live Amigo AMAs, quarterly giveaways, and crypto merch. For a dollar a day or less, you can support an Amigo out. Amigos back at it again. Today we have a guest, Tina Marie Springham, who is featured in a new movie coming out, Broken. Tina, if you could just give us some insight about you, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, you know, where you're from, your, your birth state, you know, the, the secret question or the secret answers to your, your password questions, all that stuff. <laughs> yeah. Sure. <laughs> pet's name, pet's name. Yeah. Well, uh, as you said, I'm, I'm Tina Marie Springham. I am originally from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, which is where Broken was ultimately filmed there and, and part of it in Los Angeles. And I am now currently in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. And in between those two places, I was in LA for about a decade. So. When did you start like getting into like when did you find out acting was something that you wanted to pursue completely? I've always known since I was a little girl, six years old. I know that's in the typical answer, but I was always living in that world of make believe and dragging my friends into that world. And it wasn't just it wasn't just the acting part of it. I was also fueled by words and writing. So I was writing at a really young age. Not that I knew that what I was doing. It just I was very intrigued by words. And um, I think I wrote my first play in fifth grade. And uh, I, I'm super dating myself. But there was a film that I saw as a little girl called Bugsy Malone. And, and it starred Jodie Foster and Scott Baio and a slew of other kid actors. And when I watched that film, I wanted to do what they were doing. And I knew that they were in a make-believe world and I just wanted to do what they did. Again, I probably didn't have the words to articulate you know, the technical words, but I, I wanted to create make-believe worlds. And so here we are. <laughs> I get to do that now. It seems like in the in this movie Broken, you did have an opportunity to kind of showcase that you know, may, you know, making a makeup world. I, I, it, to me, at least, it came off uh, your character, you being uh, not not to like ruin any spoilers or anything like that, but your character was the the waitress at the diner, or maybe you just you own the diner, or you were like it. Career. That was hard to tell. Yeah, but... career waitress is like she's yeah. she's been there forever, and she knows everybody and everything and she's everybody's friend <laughs> it seemed like in there that like you 
I don't know if the lines were just written that a certain way uh, to come off like this, or it seemed like you were like almost ad-libbing some of the lines that you had, like, you know, telling the sheriff, again, no spoilers or anything, but telling the sheriff, you know, hey, it's, it's on the house, don't worry about it. You know, little, little things like that, it just caught my attention, I guess, with how you portrayed your character. Yeah, when, when Janice was presented to me, it, it was discussed with Patrick, who's one of the writers of the film, and the director. She really is rooted in this small town, and you know she's she's the 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 nosy town lady gal, but not in an obnoxious way. She just everyone happens to trust her. Everyone happens to tell her everything. And so she's got this wealth of information and connections to everyone, even strangers. She just has a way of making them feel like they're welcome and that they can trust her. Yeah, that's, no, that's that really the, came off. That's normally the cool thing about small town kind of feels, right? Yeah. I guess everyone knows each other. Yeah. And there's always that one lady too. <laughs> Isn't oh, yeah. there? Yeah. So I, I was really excited to get to play her because she's a she's an important part for the sheriff to go back to the roots it it almost came off like well i actually i don't i don't want to really go into that but it did it, it helped like you contributed a lot to what the the sheriff's character needed like pointed them in the right direction kind of which was again fascinating with just the dynamic of, of what was really going on during the actual movie. Yeah, I, I think the feel of the ad lib, those there weren't any lines ad lib. That that would be a testament to the writing for oh, sure. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Does does it does that normally come from like part to part when it comes to movies where they'll like be like you can ad lib or they don't let you ad lib or it just depends on the writer director. It depends. I, I I have found it depends on on the project and it depends mm -hmm. on if if it's uh, some of the situate or some of the projects that I've been in. If it's the writer is the director and they want you to contribute more to the storytelling there's leeway and freedom to be able to explore that and of course you always sort of consult in advance a little bit of this is yeah. you know because there's you you want to be off book but you don't want to surprise everybody so much that they're like oh my god what the heck was that <laughs> yeah where'd that come from yeah but sometimes <laughs> it works or mistakes you, you 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 say things that you didn't mean to say that still mm. fall in line with what the character would say and Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. But I think, I think a good actor will always honor the writer's dialogue. And if there's something to contribute, then out of respect, at least I do anyway, out of respect, you sort of consult, is like, this is sort of an idea that I had. What do you think? And in the moment of your answer that you're receiving, you, you understand whether or not you have the leeway or the freedom and I've been really fortunate that um, I have had those experiences so that's very cool yeah have you ever been with some have you ever worked on the other side of somebody who just wouldn't follow direction and like would want to do their own thing and had to be kind of like hey guy what are you doing or hey girl no actually I, I haven't um, really that'll be, oh, cool. <laughs> knock on wood that'll be interesting when when that happens but <laughs> Yeah, I think, I mean, you hear... Everyone's of, professional, I guess. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and you hear of stories of, like, you know, famous actors who, who ad-lib their lines, and everyone just, when you're in the moment, when you know your character, when you know the story, when you, when you really have built that world, then those moments can happen. And, you know, there's, there's times where I have been in a scene where an actor, a fellow actor's forgotten their lines, and they ad-lib just to not ruin the take at that point it really is up to the writer and the director um did it work did it fit did, yeah that was great you know, yeah. it, it created something that we weren't expecting so i i think there's lots of opportunity for that in the right time in the right project so hmm. so with this character how much did you personally relate to this to, to the character in taking the role well i've slung a few beers in my time <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So in that sense, I'm not exactly a great food waitress, so um, <laughs> that would not be my, my background, but I've definitely worked in the bars, so. But she was so lovable, like I really dug her. And I think up until that point, if, I, if I'm sort of, this was back in 2018 when, when we began to film this, so. And, and there's been a bit of delay, obviously, for obvious reasons of last year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. up until that point, I was getting a lot of crying mom roles. <laughs> and <laughs> this was such a breath of fresh air for me. <laughs> so I, I really wanted to make her m memorable. It was, she was memorable for me just because it was such a different character. So... Well, cool. yeah, she is very memorable. I, obviously, I'm talking about some of the dynamic and the lines and, and helping the sheriff with within the, the plot of the movie. Yeah, I I really like the character, at least. Is there, with this movie, projects like it? Now, you, you just talked about how you had been taking quite a few roles where you were the crying mom. And this was like a breath of fresh air. Is there a particular role that you're kind of aiming for? Do you have have any ambitions for not ambitions? What am I trying to say? Like, what do you, are you, what do you shoot? Is there one like a dream role that you're looking for? Yeah, there you, you want to be. Yeah, um, you want to you want to be the town cop. <laughs> well, <laughs> I do want to be the town oh, cop. As a yes, matter of fact, I am. Um, I, I've been fortunate. I took some. I took some bold chances right after Janice that role, and submitted myself for some detective roles that were originally written for men. And in one case in particular, I went in. I, I asked if they would consider re reading me for it, and they did. And they they ultimately ended up going with a male for the character he was perfect it, and it was supposed to be a cop who was retiring so but they they loved what i did so much and i didn't hear back from them for like three weeks so i was like i guess i didn't get that one but when they did reach out to me they said the reason why it took them such a long time was that they they loved what i did in the audition what i brought to the table and so there was a character in the film that had only been ever talked about, this particular detective, and what they did was they wrote her in, and then they offered me the role. So I, mm. I've, I've been fortunate, I've just been really fortunate in all the roles I've, I've gotten, that I kind of, a little ballsy, and I just go for it. So that's good. That's what you got to do. Isn't yeah. it crazy, though, that it happens like that? Like, you, you, you went in intending to get this role, but... They loved exactly what you were you were bringing to the table, and they were like, "Okay, well, we, we need to incorporate this somehow." Yeah, it it was it was mind blowing and affirming as well, like affirming and confirming at the same time. Is that yeah. you're only going to get what you're willing to step out for. Mm, so yeah, if good. like at that point, I, I had been really scared to go big or go home and I'm like yeah. at, but at some point you get tired you get tired and you finally just go like what's the worst that's going to happen they're going to say no or you hear crickets and they did yeah. say no and I did hear crickets but in this case it was all because they were <laughs> trying to figure out how to make it so that I could be a part of this project and, and it's a great project and I know we're not here to talk about that one but I, I really have fearlessly scared shitless can I say that? Um, gone yeah, for the yeah, roles yeah, that yeah. I've gone for because I've got That's good. nothing to lose. There you go. Right. So nice. So Heck what's yeah, the difference stuff. between when you getting into going to for a role like that, right? With nothing, you having that feeling, nothing to lose. Like the worst I can say is no, and I, you know I'll move on and find the next one. Versus when, let's say, when you started and and, and the butterflies. Like where? What's the big <laughs> dramatic difference with? you know, all, those type of auditions, like how, how do you basically tackle them now? That's a great question. And there is such a difference. I'm going to try and like put it succinctly. One of the, one of the main things, and I hope this comes across <laughs> the right way. <laughs> and I've given this advice to, to some people, not just actors, but like friends of mine. When yeah. you 
when you care about what you do because of your work ethic, but don't give a shit. <laughs> yeah. I hope that makes sense. I used to care and give a shit so much that it was like I was attached to the outcome. Yeah. And then I start. I I, I started to realize like. <laughs> I am like over invested in it so much so that it's like my my wounded broken ego is attached to all of this when in fact it's if you show up having done your homework and doing your best work and yeah. then saying here it is I'm either what you're looking for or I'm not but you, yeah. you could you could take that 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 view uh, it, you can apply that anything. in, in yeah, that's anything good. really. Exactly. Yeah, that's good. I can I can <laughs> really relate to that because you know it, we're doing certain things you know with our show and just a lot of partnerships between me and Scott with what's going on and you know it, I'm a hundred percent more than a hundred percent on on a lot of the things that are going around in my life but th at the same time there are certain things where I'm all like I'm giving the effort but if this doesn't work out. I, I don't care. Yeah. And not this is news to me. Well, not not necessarily the stuff that we're no, doing, no. Scott. You I, know I, what I, you know I, what I, I mean. About. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah and the I thing is, it. Mark, I think I think what you, you do care. Yeah. And, that, and yeah. that's why I've sort of distinguished those two phrases. Is like you care because if you have a work ethic and if you take pride in what you do and, and you want to do a good job, I mean that's those are all great things. But when we care so so much. That's why yeah. I, you know, offset it with, I care, but I don't give a shit. Like I, yeah. because at the end of the That's day, a good shirt. you got to make those shirts, <laughs> right? It's a good at shirt. At the end of the mine. day, I really feel like when the door that's meant to open for me already is open. Mm. All I got to so do is show up deep. and, and yeah. if it's all aligned, then I'm just walking through the open door that's already there. It's when I go, oh my God, that door's got to be open. I need this. I want this. Yeah. And then the door's not open. That's when it's like all this disappointment. Like, I, I, I'm so simplifying it. Like it took me years no, to get no, to this good. place. But at the end of the day, it really just is like, do your best work, have fun in what you do. And the doors will open. Or, you, or you they're totally already tell. open and you just have to arrive, it's true. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can tell too, like the the way the confidence you're bringing and actually, you know, giving this example out, it, it's there. Like it's oh, very yeah. prevalent. No, yeah. And don't sure. get me wrong, I still get scared shitless. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm fearlessly doing something, I'm doing it scared shitless. But I'm doing it fearlessly because really, at the end of the day, it's like. I know I'm doing my best work and I know there's times where I, I'm, I'm sure I've done auditions where I, like, you know, it's my eighth one that week and I'm just fried and burnt out and this is the best that I can deliver and is it my best? Uh, yeah. You know, it, I know it's my best in the moment because I will always put out great work to, to the best yeah. of my ability. But, you know, I think there's another phrase that I have and it's, Right place, right time, right face, right line. All those mm -hmm. things need to align. I can be the right face yeah. and say the right lines, but maybe it's not the right project. You know, maybe mm -hmm. I, there's been many times where I've auditioned for something and then I've seen the project and I go, oh, that's the kid they cast as the, as the son. I don't look anything like his mom. No wonder I didn't get it. So it had nothing to do mm -hmm. with my ability. There's so many factors in getting cast that you just again put your best work for forward and if it's meant for that door to open it already is yeah yeah you made a little mention there about you know going back and watching something do you watch your own material afterwards or 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 because i know some act some guests that we've had they, they're like no i can't i can't watch anything i do I, it's just i just show up and, and act and then others are like yeah actually i go back and watch everything because the stuff i'm doing i really enjoy like that's the stuff i watch i do i watch i, I watch i watch not from uh oh my god did i do a good job i i trust that the directors put me there for a reason and i trust their guidance when they're trying to pull something out uh, that they're trying to get. Yeah. I also aspire to be a director. So when I watch, 
I'm not watching as a critical actor uh, watching myself. I'm actually watching for was that continuity? Was it like there's so many other things that I'm that's playing mm -hmm. through my head a, as a creator? I think there was a time years ago that I would watch it and go, oh, that wasn't so good, or oh, did I really look like that? But that's not where my head is at these days. I'm grateful I'm not there. I, I really, I, I got the audition, I got the callback, I got the job, I must be doing something right. The, the rest I have to trust. Yeah, yeah. They're capturing what they need. And if they're not, then they keep doing the takes until they get what they want. Yeah. So, but I enjoy, I, I enjoy in front of the camera, behind the camera, I love it all. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. We somehow have made found a way to make it work with because uh, yeah, we used transition. to be together doing this in an office space, but now uh, I don't even want to say office space. It was what we had going like on, like a studio, the, your studio space. Yeah. We had a studio, yeah, yeah a studio <laughs> space. Yeah, that would be the fancy way of saying it. It was outside of a trailer park with bullet holes in the wall, but <laughs> yep. yeah, whatever it was, takes, yep. right? Whatever. But it, it was an office place. <laughs> I mean, it, it elevated up. it elevated from a garage to well, an office that's... space to now, I guess, yeah, you know, across the country kind of thing. But well, that br that brings a question. Sure. You talk about elevation, right? Yeah. And how we we evolved from a garage to where we're at now. Well, we may have devolved a little bit, but no, no. Uh... <laughs> we have amazing actors and actresses on with us. Where where was your ev evolution basically? So you did say you know this is something you realized you wanted to do as a kid. Like where where was it that it became like okay this is the career, um, like mm. this, this is I'm doing this as my career uh, going forward. So it's two a.m. You're done serving beers. <laughs> you're like you're like it's time it's time i to did change. i did the lunch shift i wasn't a 2 a.m oh, okay, yeah right. i i elevated to the to the lunch shift to the um, day to the day shift <laughs> well you know it's it's funny that okay so here's a here's a pulling out of the vault there was a time where i was i had just moved to vancouver and i was waitressing at a sure it's going to come out at some point i was waitressing at a world famous club Oh, in wow, fact, okay. Motley Crue sang about girls, girls, or in the song "Girls, Girls, Girls" about the body shop and the Marble Arch. I used to waitress at the Marble Arch here in Vancouver. Oh, nice! And yeah. at that time, I had been a couple of the regular guys who were coming in for their lunch were, and of course, their names completely escape me at the moment. And so I'm super embarrassed that I can't remember the names. But they were directors and producers here in Vancouver, and that was. Around the time, directors and, and producers at strip clubs, no way. No way. They don't do that. <laughs> right? They 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 knew that I wanted to to be an actor, and I was taking acting classes at that time. And because they were regular, they were regulars in my section. They offered mm -hmm. an opportunity for me to come in and audition for a role in a feature film. And I was so riddled with insecurity and I was overweight and just had zero self-esteem. You know, kind of your typical 20-something girl that just, you know, I look back at pictures of myself now and go, what was I thinking? Like, that's crazy. <laughs> like, I would looked pretty good. But at the time, that's not how I felt. And so, yeah. long story short, I I studied these lines and it was it was an absolute case of like, Oh my God, I care so much. I give a shit so much about this. And I convinced myself in 24 hours that if I didn't get this and land this, this would be the only opportunity that ever comes my way. Oh, and wow, I believed yeah. it. And so I went in and I tanked the audition. <laughs> I got so nervous. And part of it was I knew that these guys had put their neck out for me to even uh -huh. be there. And number two, I had run into a girl who was, she didn't like me and uh, was very mean no. and cruel, said something to me another about- Another chick from the club? What's that? Is that another chick from the club? Uh, no, no, she was a bartender from somewhere else, but it, oh, but gotcha. it, it was a, you know, just a, a really, what's that movie? Mean Girls. And oh, yeah. she, she yeah, said yeah. to me, she goes, they're never going to pick a fat girl like you. Oh. oh. Right before I walked into the audition. So again, I was I was not this confident, confident gal that I am right now. And, and I just froze. Girls are mean. And I stood there in front of the 
casting director and the producer and director, and I, I couldn't remember a line. It was awful. It was the worst experience of my life, and that's it. I thought I effed up so badly, this will never happen again for me. And so then no. I steered away from it. I, I convinced myself that I was no good and I'll never be good enough. And then fast forward, I end up in LA going, screw this, I'm going to be an actress. <laughs> and then started <laughs> into music and then it took on a whole life of its own. And it was all this distraction away from the thing I wanted to do, which was act and write. And so it wasn't until 2017 where my whole life fell apart. And I pooled on my kitchen floor, said, I have nothing left, where? And then suddenly it was like, well, then you have nothing left to lose. So I said to myself, so you will dust off your demo reel, you will dust off your resume, and by June of that year, which uh, is my birthday, you will have an agent, you will be out auditioning, and that is all you're gonna do for better or for worse. And shortly after that, I saw the video on Goalcast with Peter Dinklage, yeah. I don't know if you've seen that one where he gives the speech is about the how he was movie? 29 years old and for better or oh. for worse, he was going to be a full-time working actor. And I have watched that video and the Lisa Kudrow video about getting fired and it was the best thing that could have ever happened to her because those things were happening to me at that time. And I was just like, that's it. Like, fearlessly scared shitless. That is it. That's what I'm it, doing. It just and takes one, like... You know, that, that one crazy, like Peter Dinklage or Lisa Kudrow, that one role that would just elevate yep. it to the super next level, you know? So it's, that's yeah. crazy. One, Peter one, Dinklage to me, he's so great. He, he is. is. He is, yeah, yeah. One, qu- one question going back to the, uh, at the, at the club where they're asking you to, to come interview at a, uh, for, for a, for a movie, oh, audition, was, yeah. yeah. Was there was there any red flags at all going on? Like maybe thinking <laughs> oh, no, like no, 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 this no, might no. not be guys, the type um, of movie. Sorry, I, their their names. I'm, I feel just uh, please don't put it in there that I can't. No, no, no. It has to be the real they, names. Um, I'm just I'm just wondering. The, they were the executive oh, producers. It's better. From... It's better that the, the na- you don't have the names. <laughs> yeah, okay. the names. No, you don't they, the names. they were the executive producers for for something. Sylvester Stallone's Rambo. Oh, okay. These guys were involved with um like. The All right, so these are legit guys. And, okay. Oh yeah, no, they were absolute legit guys. I and the movie was opposite Judd Nelson. Uh, Judd Nelson, like I'm super dating myself, but no, yeah, no. These were legit guys, and that's why it was so devastating for me that I that I I blew it, and I I uh... literally thought I will never. They'll tell everyone in Hollywood that I suck, and no one will ever hire me. That's how. Oh, I can see how that could. Yeah, yeah. I, I get that. Yeah. And but yeah, I, no. have, you, have you seen them since that interview? No. Or, or that audition, I mean? Oh, well, okay. I think I think they came in. I mean, this was, so, oh my God, so long ago. Sure, I think they came in and I just avoided them. I was I was oh. humiliated. Like it, it was, yeah, to stand, to stand in front of people who make decisions that went out on a limb to give you an opportunity. And yeah. it's not that I didn't study my lines. Like I, I stayed, I was so worried that I literally stayed up all night long. And when you're in that headspace, you can't remember lines. I, I wasn't oh, a, yeah. approaching the script, like who's my character, where is she from? What's, all I kept thinking was, oh my God, Judd Nelson. Oh my God, these Don't guys are the real deal. Oh my God, oh my God. And I'm Don't mess 40 it up. pounds overweight. Uh, yeah. This, re- this reminds me though, I-, I will say that like I've had more opportunities come to me when I didn't care as much as when I did like truly cared. Like when I first moved here, it was, I was living on unemployment for a good few months and, still and then I was like, he okay, well, yeah, I'm still living on unemployment. Well, COVID dude. I, yeah, COVID I have, money. Yeah. They're, they're just, yeah, they're just giving unemployment left and right. Right. I had to get a job at some point and it was either like live on the streets, go back home, which is originally Wisconsin or, you know, get a job and, and figure out and, you know, pay for rent. Yeah. But at the same time, I, I just, I was like, I don't want to get a job. I'm enjoying my vacation that I have right now. <laughs> and I ended up getting an interview for a big bank here. And I went in the night before, went out with a bunch of buddies because I didn't care about the interview. I, I, I wanted it, but I didn't want it. It just it didn't matter. But I got really wasted, and I ended up showing 
it was just sounds awful but i ended up showing up at the interview still drunk from the night before nice still not caring if i got the job or not i don't know if i know this story. and nailed it that's so awesome. I, I, I like your stories and you know the, where you were stressed and you didn't really care i want to get this and things like I, i'm just trying to relate basically yeah no uh, it, it and and you and you you've hit the nail on the head there's like there's this there's freedom there, there's an there's yeah, an element yeah. of freedom uh, or maybe it's carefree you yep. know what i mean yeah, i'm yeah. not suggesting that anyone go out there and not give a shit about what they do and or get act, drunk like, before you interview the next day <laughs> what yeah, i'm saying yeah. is is oh, that these are not good advices if it's really meant to be then you're going to show up and do your best yep. work and it's all has to align yep you yeah, know, like, yeah as an actor i go and I, I i prep the scene i make choices of what the care i think the character is i.e like janice i made i make character choices about her and patrick said to me i i never envisioned her that way and what you brought to the table about her i that's not who i saw as that's awesome when i wrote it he says so thank you for that you know like somebody else may have brought something completely different that did align with how he saw her initially mm -hmm. and so you know i think it's i think it's safe for me to say this that by doing something making a, a bold choice about her it was just my choice it was an artistic choice i took a chance and that's how i thought she should be and who she was and it was something that he hadn't seen so mm -hmm. if you're a, a casting director and they're going yeah we've seen this waitress okay and yeah. every actor we've has done her this way and then someone comes in and does it in a way that they go oh it's not wrong and it's not right it's just different yeah you know whenever you hear about a, an actor who who auditions for and gets the role there's lots of actors who are good and bring a good audition to the table but it's that thing that you just go like like when dogs go walk what whoa that, that <laughs> got my attention what is that i don't know exactly I think it's just the right thing at the right time, right face, right line. Like, I just think it's really, if it's meant, yeah, I keep repeating that if it's meant to be, I'm not trying to be so flippant and cliche about it, but no, I mean, it, it, it's been working. So, yeah. and it makes sense because if you go into it, you don't want to a overthink it. You don't want to set your, your expectations too high. Cause you're just going to, like you're saying, crash and burn if you don't get what you're trying to get. So you might as well just go in there, do what you got to do and it works it works it doesn't it doesn't yeah and then on to the next one and you know you, there's going to be actors listening to this and other people going oh yeah easy for her to say she booked the role <laughs> <laughs> but i i keep a log of my like a, a a spreadsheet i guess if you will of like all my auditions and i started doing that not because i was obsessing about it or anything i just you kind of forget how many auditions you've done you kind of forget you're being brought in a lot so yeah. I, I kind of wanted to just it, it, just remind myself like every time you audition you get to act yeah yeah so even though you're not booking you're still creating you're working the craft yeah. yeah and you're getting to build a world and, and it creates ideas for other things that I like uh, other projects that I'm writing and it, it gives you an idea of what other people are writing and what they're actually willing to make into projects that uh, the outside world is going to see and I, I can say it now <laughs> I got to an audition number 196 and audition 199 back in June and July and this is I started compiling since 2017 when I like do the line in the sand in the cement yeah. actually so <laughs> number 196 and 198 I booked mm, I booked nice. one I can say wow. is a CW show and one is a Netflix oh. show I can't say what they are because they That's haven't awesome. announced it and blah 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 yeah. but I say this from from the deepest sincerest part of me to any actor listening that it is a numbers game and every time you audition you're planting a seed because mm. the two casting directors that 
kept bringing me in, kept bringing me in, kept bringing me in. I kind of forgot how many times they were bringing me in. Does it does and, it turn into very like robotic or like does that happen sometimes? Like you let's say you do like six a day or something, you turn to like oh, I was supposed to be, you know, the the mailman, this one or the male woman. You know what I mean? Like does that ever happen where you're like you so you got so many in one day where you don't know which is which. Oh, I, you know I, what I mean. I've I've had that happen, yeah. And you really, <laughs> I mean, but it's not about robotic. It's it's kind of remember uh, like I try. You know, you try to prioritize. Yeah. Which ones need to be in at what time? And thankfully, I've been in a situation where there's only been I think three times where like three or four auditions are all due on the same day. Sometimes you get two days to prep. Sometimes you get four. Sometimes you get like it's a 24-hour turnaround. Oh wow! When that happens, I do my best. I kind of chalk it up to like it's not that the role is bigger or smaller. I try to do all the prep, and it's when you understand the world that the character is in, and what does the character want, and what purpose is the character serving. It's. And I think because it's not, it's, I'm coming from a place now of like, I just enjoy doing this mm. rather than, yeah. oh my God, I want to book the, I want to book the job. Yeah. I want to book them all. Like, so that yeah. feeling is with all of them. It's not one over the other anymore. So I get to act. I, I, I learn the lines as best I can. Sometimes I have to have a cheat sheet and it's funny. The times that I do a cheat sheet are the times I never even look at it, but I know it's there <laughs> if I ever need. I don't yeah. do that all the time, but, but I have done it when I've got four auditions all due in one day and <laughs> ever, ever done the Sharpie on the hand. No, 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 if, no. If I'm ever, if I, no, if I'm ever in that position, I just, I just hold my sides. Like a casting gotcha. director will, will save some grace in that, you know, it's, it is possible that you're doing more than one audition in one day. That's cool. You know, you, you think that they're all kind of is, rude. Sorry, you, go ahead. I said, you would think that they're all kind of maybe rude to people, but that's nice that they do help out. That's oh, cool. no. Well, and now we're in, in a world of self tapes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, we're not, we're them not to them, right? in person. They, they've, That's they've, true. Yeah, the COVID by world. By default, they've been going. Uh, they had resorted to self tapes, and now casting. Many casting directors are saying, "This is such a great thing. Why didn't we always do it this way? Because we can actually see more people now." Mm. So yeah. There's a little more leeway with time to prep, um, yeah. and the reading of you know the cheat sheets or whatever was more early on yeah before the changes before the changes and yeah <laughs> that's, what, I just, that's what we'll call I, it the changes the changes <laughs> but you know it's it's about staying in character hmm. right like if i have to glance down at a line as long as i keep staying in my character you know obviously that's not the character i'm doing but, right you know as long as you don't go and then uh, jump back in. Is that if you can, if you can still pick up your line off the page rookie. and still stay with who the character is, that you're not losing the interest, right? It's yeah, the minute you yeah. go back into Tina Marie, the actor. Now I'm going to say my line as Janice. You, you lose. You disconnect, right? What's, so it's all what's the stuff. longest time you took a character back with you? Let's say you, you were acting yeah. like something for oh, that was loud. Doing, I don't know how anyone heard that. That was like a beeping. No, thing. I think anyways. that was mine. Sorry. Oh, was it? I'm like, I heard that. Oh, anyways, don't worry. <laughs> like, were you in character one time and you took it like an accent or, or something where you just ran with it for longer than you should have, or maybe you kept doing it to keep keep in character for a role? I I did, yeah. Uh, and it wasn't that it was too long. It was that because she, it was based on a true story, and she was drug addict, drug addicted woman who lost her family. Oh, this is gonna be good. In um in a plane crash. Do you remember the plane, the Alaska Airlines plane crash that oh, no. leaving Disneyland? And I think it happened just wow. outside of Seattle. This is oh, wow. This turned okay. Well, no, anyway, I don't, she, I don't she to stay in that character because she was in such a distraught place. Yeah. I just it was too hard to get out of that in between takes. So I just kind of stayed there, and it was the oh. most draining. I bet. But it was super cool to play but, but took sad everything same, out yeah. of me those four weeks of filming were were mm. just brutal i i was wounded like for weeks after that wow yeah, yeah. so i brought that up 
<laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. Yeah. Wow. I think that's what you meant by the question, I, though. Yeah, right? no, that was yeah, good. Okay. That You nailed it. But yeah, that was, I was hoping. You yeah. thought it was going to go a different direction. I was going a different way because you, totally you were talking about drug, the other way. drug addicted. Oh, you thought I was playing like, the oh, drunk gonna... woman at the bar and I just stayed drunk like Or something. Week? Yeah, I was like, oh, no. Oh, no. This... And then the plane crashed and I was like, oh, man. She ended up being a waitress got... at a strip club and got a different audition somewhere else. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah. Wow. <laughs> All right. So we're, we're going to start our questions. <laughs> go, oh, go, okay. go, go back go into some fun yeah. after after that fun so we ask a, we ask a couple we ask three questions and okay. they're kind of random but some of them we've done before but either way yeah, they're just three random questions that you know best you can answer or you, okay. you never know what is your favorite conspiracy like a conspiracy theory is there one that you think that might be it doesn't have to be a favorite which one do you think that is like the most possible most legit like aliens do you think jfk got killed by more than one person do oh. you think that there's mole people tons of things or maybe there's a canadian one that i don't know about like i don't know that's a good oh my god that's a good question eskimos um, or something wow i get crickets <laughs> <laughs> So, so a conspiracy theory that I think could actually be possible. Oh, flat Earth! Some people think flat, flat Earth. I mean, oh uh, yeah, no, 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 yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, no. Um, right now, right now we're idea. shooting about like seventeen percent of our guests that actually think flat Earth. So, okay, yeah. that's sure. higher than I thought. I Just think some something, Europe. something about the Bermuda Triangle. Oh, all right. So I, I think, one. I think there's something, something, something there. Yeah. So you think you think that the, those points are like if you fly over that, more than likely you just go somewhere else or or something happens, right? You just sure fall off I the got radar. Imagination, yeah. I okay. That or right. Sasquatch, I guess. Oh, Sasquatch, yeah. Up in... Right. I don't. I don't know. This is a tough question. I've never. I've never been asked this question, and. <laughs> Well, that's one. Well, I, I, I think right. I think Sasquatch is is just basically a person who doesn't want to be in civilization anymore. He's also blurry. Too. Oh yeah, very blurry. Like he's not photogenic. Camera doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> right. I agree. I don't and they make good jerky. Isn't that Sasquatch that does the jerky too? Oh yeah. yeah. yeah I don't know what that he wants jerky. Your jerky. I don't know. Yeah, I don't. He's on, yeah. Either way. Let's see. What life hack or something you do that people do differently that you, than you do like what life hack do you know that basically that no one knows that is a good Everybody thing to do else like, does it wrong yeah it does it wrong like you i don't know like you, you use you get phone books and start fires with it or i, I don't know something <laughs> not that that's whoever gets phone books anymore i love that you're trying to give an example well i'm trying to help you know i'm trying to help, i'm trying to help the people out. <laughs> okay so um this is grilled cheese cool. grilled cheese with an iron i mean people do that in jail i think and I guess they don't have irons in jail. I used to, I used to flat iron my hair with an iron because oh wow, they didn't have All right. flat That's, irons back in the day. But that is yeah. No, so you but you know, you know, it's funny you had. They had those. I'm you, sorry. You, go ahead, um, go ahead. During uh, during last year, I'll just call it last year. Yeah. Before the change. Before the change. Before the change. Yes. <laughs> so, you know, money's tight. Mm -hmm. You gotta stretch things as, as long and as hard and as far as you can. So yeah. I was trying to, you know, save some money and um, I discovered for all the ladies out there and the men too, if you're if you're using like cream, you know, like face cream or body cream that comes in a tube. Uh-huh. If you cut the tube, oh. right? When it gets down to like you everyone gets that last squirt and you think it's empty and you throw it away. If you yeah. cut the tube, the the, the, the not top the part, part but the closed end, you can scrape out oh. another three weeks worth of cream Whoa. in that tube. And and I told my friend about it, and she's like, "Yeah, but if you leave it open, it'll dry out." I'm like, "No, you take the end you cut off and you put it on put the it end that you on. cut, and it will last you three weeks." So that is brilliant. Nice. There's my life hack. I hope I've helped a whole lot of people out. <laughs> What I do, which is probably a, a cheaper approach, I don't. Or I, I put my, I put the thing, my finger in there, and I scrape it out to use exactly. some. But yours is more effective because you're getting all of it. Yep. So, yeah. <laughs> yep. Wow. Three weeks. That's awesome. 
That is good. That's a, when you think about how much product. Oh, I know you throw away, away over the years. You're yeah. like, no. holy shit, that's like a lot of money. So that is so anyway, true. That's my life hack. That is a good one. I I water down soap, hand soap. Yep. Oh. Just so I could do that. That's a good one too. That's a good yeah. one. All right. What is uh, what is your guilty pleasure? Like, uh, do you have like music that you listen to? Like, maybe people think is like, oh, you listen to that, or like a movie. Like, you like, I don't, I don't know. Like, you like horror movies, and that's maybe like a normal thing. I, mean, I know Mark likes horror movies, but you know things like that. Or like, you listen to uh, sound of music every time before you go to an audition. That's what I would do. Something like that. Oh, these are good questions, you guys. Uh, my guilty pleasure. Let me see. Britney Spears on a loop. <laughs> Why not? It's good stuff. I. Oh love... no! You watch Mean Girls before no. every audition. <laughs> no, no. Oh my gosh! This is another good tough one. Back, guilty guys. pleasure. Oh. I I love Burt Bacharach. Okay, like that. It's like the piano kind of music, right? Or like yeah. the. Yeah. And like the motel music almost, right? Or like the what do they call that? Whether it's I can't think of what that's called. Elevator music. Kinda of like that. Well I yeah. think yeah, maybe. Not to, I don't not know. To like I, I love old pleasure. I love old music. So I love all kinds of music. Me too. Yeah. But that would be a guilty pleasure. Yeah. And not everybody. Guilty pleasure of movies. I love it's all right. It's all right. Fiddler on the Roof. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. That would be a guilty pleasure. How many times have you seen it? <laughs> Too many times to count. Yeah, that's a guilty pleasure. If I was a rich man. Yeah. I love it. Wow. I love it. All right. That's good. And then all the 80s movies. Yeah. Those are good. Well, maybe not all of them, but... The, what would be, the, what would be your rat, least favorite rat pack ones what would be your late your least favorite 80s movie that everybody likes oh lover boy that's a good movie 100 cigarettes i don't know those i don't you, know those. lover boy um, with patrick dempsey and he's a lawnmower guy in arizona no what's the pizza boy one that's that one We're, oh it is that one <laughs> we're both he's girls the lawnmower guy we're both like, we're both girls for knowing that <laughs> uh, what's the other one I've never seen St. Elmo's Fire but people like that one so I would think oh, yeah, that's no, not love, good that's good I love I've those oh, you one. know what was a, was quite a cheesy one and but I people think liked be, it well I think they liked it but it would be so it was Rob Lowe and he, his his best friend sleeps with his mom picks her up at a bar and mm. then they go he's, he invites him over for Thanksgiving dinner and there's the woman that he picked up in the bar is like I forget what his the name of that almost sounds like that one movie American Pie but it's not obviously because that's older or like newer than that yeah. one but it's same kind of premise yeah I'm gonna look that one up see Rollo. oh he was in St. Elmo's Fire Yep. Yeah, they all were. It was it, it was Rat Pack or Brat Pack. Not um, uh, not outsiders, right? No, that's when they were fighting. No, 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 no. It's um, can, you know the the show Good Girls. Yeah. The 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 guy who plays the assassin. I'm just blanking on his name. He was a huge. He, he is a huge actor. In the Saint Al Anthony. No. Oh my God, I can't. Believe, I'm blanking on his name. <sighs> Jacqueline. The, no. Oh, wow. Well, I know it's Rob Lowe. Rob Lowe plays the son. The mom is a beautiful 80s actress, Jacqueline something. You know, I wish I wish this would be more in order. Oh, maybe it is. Okay, sorry. I'm not scrolling fast enough. Rob Lowe's been a lot of stuff. It's Flask. The Flask? It has, that has uh, Jacqueline Bissett. Bissett That's it. In... What was it called? Class. Yeah. I didn't know he was in... The uh... 1983. <laughs> Wow, wow, yeah. I have not seen that one. Yeah, it's okay. I'm going to watch it now for sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to too because now I hear it's amazing that you didn't like it though. <laughs> it's not that I didn't like it. It was just like, is that? But that's, I don't know. that's what I mean because when everyone's like, oh, this one's so good, but you're like, oh, no, I didn't think so. Oh, Rob Lowe's not the, not the kid that gets the mom though, which is weird. No, it's his mom. 
Yeah. It's, it's wow. Anthony, it's Anthony. No, what's his name? Anthony something. Anthony Michael Hall. No. Andrew McCarthy. Andrew McCarthy. There you uh, go. So Andrew yeah. McCarthy he's, right he's now is pretty, a good girl. Pretty, pretty in pink guy, right? No, is yep. that right? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Wow, this that's is hilarious. No, I have, is, to watch, uh, I have to watch that now for sure. This was a crazy how does ending. How Rob Lowe not get the part where he's the guy that? <laughs> yeah, how, how is Rob Lowe not hot enough for to get whatever going on there? See that? Casting directors, they didn't know. Right? Yeah. yeah. Comes full it, circle. It would be, it would be so, for, for me anyway, I can't speak for anybody else, but I think it'd be so cool to be able to go back and see how those auditions like what they look like like do you guys you ever might, go you on be able to go get some... watch like how did oh. a certain actress or actor what's their footage for um, uh, yeah. like on games of thrones you can go and see some of their auditions of who got the part oh, and who didn't yeah. it's yeah. just fascinating because all the all the auditions are good but there's certain things that that they that the ones who got it do they do something there there's i'm trying to remember which character it was but he actually in his audition Eight in the film, he's or in the show, he's actually eating like a leg of chicken or a leg of beef or something. But in the audition, he had the, the, the biggest carrot, and he's munching on this carrot like <laughs> I just. It's funny because it, that's what got him the role. Wow. Yeah. The one you thing know, that didn't I, I watched those outtakes, but when Peter Dinklage was trying to be the mountain, like I don't know why he went for that first. Not I'm messing hmm. with you guys. No, why would he go for the mountain? <laughs> <laughs> He's really like a third of the size. <laughs> He's got pulling our leg, pulling your carrot, Mark. Oh, yeah. gross! That's awesome. I, I love say it. that. Oh my god, you guys are awesome. I love this. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully, I did a, a decent job in answering you did amazing. the questions. No, yeah. you did good. Oh yeah, amazing. We even went to the whole. Me and Mark found out that we both like eighty girl movies, so that was that was fun. <laughs> we found out a lot today. We learned something in our real in our our friendship. We're gonna watch Lover Boy tonight, play. which is yeah. which is you never together. want to say that together. Well, if you take anything away from this interview, hopefully it's my life hack. Yo, yeah, <laughs> no, that was good. Save you three weeks. I'm, I'm gonna of... start. I'm gonna start cutting all the like, yeah, all the bottles of stuff. Everything. Right. Your ketchup, your mustard. Yeah, everything. <laughs> Everything's getting cut. How did you survive the winter, Scott? Oh, <laughs> Tina Marie, this Canadian actress, she saved my life. <laughs> Just chop it. I need one of those chop, those infomercials, the chop thingy, the chop right. saw thingy that that guy has. Chop yeah. it. Chop it. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Not the one with the ShamWow, right? The no, no. It might have been him. Oh, oh, it's the same thing? Okay. But, yeah. yeah, I don't know. Yeah. But make sure I should, I should do this. Yeah. October 19th. That's when it drops, yes. right? Broken yeah. is going to be okay. available on all streaming platforms. And you can pre-order, I know for sure, on IT, uh, Apple TV. And I think there's a link on the broken, film underscore broken on Instagram where you can go and, and pre-order on the uh, streaming apps. Thank you for that. That's actually yeah, that's, the Mark next was gonna do thing that. I was no, going to get go. but, but yeah, thanks. Thanks, but Tina. It, besides Broken, where can we also find you? Vancouver, Canada. No. Nice. <laughs> um, my my full name, Tina Marie Springham, no hyphen in that, on all social media. And IMDb, Facebook, Instagram. I've got my website, tinamariespringham.com. I'm everywhere. <laughs> everywhere soon to be even well, more places exactly yeah well thank you for coming on thank uh and you. on that yes. note uh amigos out amigos out. this has been the amigos pc make sure to like subscribe and review us on all your podcasting platforms and visit us at amigospc.net get our entire library of content and amigos merch till next time adios